Welcome to the next video in the Learning Microsoft Azure course from Pact Publishing, in which I'm going to walk you through several other Azure management tools besides the portals, which I already described in the previous video. In this one, I'm mainly going to talk about Azure PowerShell, Azure Cross-Platform CLI command line tool, as well as Visual Studio, or even if you want Visual Studio Code, which are, up to my opinion, the three prime tools besides the portals, allowing you to manage your Azure environment. One of the first tools I'm going to talk about is Azure PowerShell. Azure PowerShell is nothing different from the typical PowerShell you might already be familiar with, or you might already using it for managing your on-premises infrastructure. But at the same time, it's also allowing you to manage everything inside your Azure subscriptions. And when I'm pointing to managing, I really mean about doing about anything you can think of that you want to execute or you want to do inside your Azure environment. Provisioning resource groups, deploying web apps, deploying virtual machines, managing resources, updating resource settings, or eventually deleting about any resource you can think of. And as you learned in the previous video, Azure exists in two flavors, the classic Azure, and the Azure Resource Manager, which in the end makes it a little bit more difficult for you to understand that command line tools that you can use with PowerShell for Azure are somehow a little bit different between the classic Azure and the new Azure Resource Manager. One very important thing I have to emphasize here is Azure Classic. It's always Azure something that you have to use in the PowerShell command lines. For example, get Azure account, get Azure resource group, and so on and so on. Wherefore, everything that's related to Azure Resource Manager, the new Azure, it's always a commandlet get Azure RM, which stands for Azure Resource Manager. So it shouldn't be all that difficult. But if, for example, you go out to the internet and searching for any specific PowerShell commandlet, when it's telling you Azure something, it's mainly pointing to classic Azure, where it's pointing to Azure RM something, it's related to Azure Resource Manager. Now for managing your Azure environment, you'll find out that security is the key concept. I mean, you just have to authenticate yourself. It's one of the first steps, followed by importing a certificate which allows you to manage your Azure platform from what's called a trusted management station. Besides downloading the Azure presented management certificate, one could also upload your own certificate files, who are, for example, provisioned out of your internal corporate certificate authority. And then again, going back to PowerShell, don't forget that there are two different worlds, Azure Classic and Azure Resource Manager meaning those commandlets for each and every Azure platform aren't really compatible between the different platforms. Interesting to know, however, is that about anything you can think of doing in the Azure portals can be executed from the Azure PowerShell commandlets as well. And then sometimes it's even only possible to manage or change a specific resource directly by using PowerShell where the feature or the change setting is not even available in the portal yet. Another tool which is pretty popular in the Linux world, or if you're using Mac, and then even recently been seeing more and more people using it on a Windows platform, is Azure Cross Platform CLI, the command line tool. From an easy perspective, it's a lot similar to PowerShell, because in the end it's also a command line tool. But then you'll find out, and specifically in the demo, that there are also a lot of differences. Now, overall, in short, it starts again with the authentication, where from the Azure CLI, you start with the command Azure Login. That's the command you have to use, followed by a pretty intuitive different command line setting that you can use, like Azure VM List. Shouldn't be a surprise, we'll show you a list of all the Azure Virtual Machine images that are available in Azure. Or, as you'll find out later when I'm doing a demo, 
is getting a list of other commandlets or even creating resource groups, modifying resource group object settings and so on. The last tool I'm going to cover in this section is Visual Studio. Visual Studio is known as a development environment, but it also allows you to manage Azure resources. And by managing, I again mainly mean deploying Azure resources, updating settings, making changes, removing resources, and so on and so on. If you don't need all the specific developer features from Visual Studio, but still want to use a more intelligent coding environment than just Notepad, for example, or even PowerShell, you could also have a look at Visual Studio Code. But in this course, I'm mainly talking about Visual Studio and I'll use it for some of my demos later on. Within Visual Studio, there is a section called Cloud Explorer, which, as you can see in the screenshot here, basically gives you a preview of all your Azure resources. Even starting from your different subscriptions, if you want, and then on subscription level itself, showing you all the active resources that you have, like application service plans, public IP addresses, storage accounts, what have you. It's all based on the Azure.NET SDK that you need to install prior to using Visual Studio for Azure. Then you authenticate yourself using Azure Management Account, and from there on, you can, for example, build and deploy Azure RM templates one of the things that will be covered in the next section. One of the things I'll cover in one of the upcoming videos is creating Azure Web Apps, how to deploy them, showing you how to connect to Azure resources or integrating with, for example, Application Insights, one of the Azure features and demos I'll do later on. So with that, I'm gonna start with a quick demo about Azure PowerShell. From my Windows machine, I'm starting PowerShell assuming you're already familiar with PowerShell already, and I'm going to start with importing the module for Azure RM, Azure Resource Manager. So we're gonna use the commandlet install module Azure RM. What will happen now is that I will connect to the internet backend and PowerShell will try to download the latest version of the Azure PowerShell module. Once the Azure Resource Manager module is installed, I'm going to authenticate myself against my Azure environment by using the commandlet login Azure RM account. As you can see in my demo, I made a small typo there and I did it on purpose just to emphasize that it happens. Don't get crazy, don't get scared if your PowerShell window is full of red items. Just go back and check the syntax of your commandlet and most probably you'll find out that it's a typo. So nothing to really worry about. After firing up the login Azure RM account commandlet, I'm authenticated. It, received, it shows me the pop-up, I'm entering my credentials, and from here, after a successful logon, it shows me my account, my tenant ID, and my subscription ID, or multiple subscription IDs if you want. And then you can also switch from one subscription to the other. From here, you could create a new Azure resource group, or getting a list of existing Azure resources already deployed. Again, in short, get is the commandlet within PowerShell overall for getting information out of the system. And Azure RM points specifically to Azure Resource Manager. So get Azure RM Resource Group will show me the two resource groups I already deployed in the previous demos. And at the same time, let me quickly show you how easy it is to create a new one. Using the commandlet new Azure RM Resource Group, providing a name, for example, packed resource group tree, and the location, which is a required field when creating a resource group, for example, central US. After only a couple of seconds, it will tell me, hey, good job, successfully created your resource group. That's how easy PowerShell can be. Now, obviously, this is just a quick introduction to PowerShell. If you're already an expert on PowerShell, but never really used it for Azure, it shouldn't be that hard to really start managing your Azure platform completely out of PowerShell. The key recommendation I can share is if you're still not using PowerShell, allocate enough time to really become good at it. Know the important commandlets as this will get you going with Azure in no time. And this completes my demo for using Azure PowerShell. 
So now I'm jumping to the next one, walking you through how to use the Azure CLI command line management tool. So let me start by Azure command prompt here, where again, it all starts with authenticating yourself, which in the Azure CLI is done by using the command Azure login, which generates a specific session code and reroutes you to a specific website, aka.ms slash device login, where I need to copy this unique code, confirming it, then selecting my user account that I want to use for this session and logging on. Now, since I'm already pre-authenticated out of the PowerShell demo before, I'm successfully authenticated. And when going back to my command line tool, it will tell me login command OK. From here, I could use the command Azure help as an example for getting a full list of commands that I could use. And as I showed you in the PowerShell demo before, it's easy to get a list of Azure resource groups. Or I could do about the same demo, namely creating a new resource group here, which would be the command Azure group create as a command line syntax for creating the group, providing a name back to resource group four and specifying a location, for example, West US. And then again, only after a couple of seconds, it will confirm that my resource group has been created successfully, which again was a really short demo on using the possibilities of Azure command line management tools if you're using Linux, Mac OS, and even in meantime, running on Windows. Only thing I can do from here is encourage you to go ahead and start using PowerShell, start using Azure CLI command line tool, and become a true expert in using those tools, which basically completes my demo on Azure CLI. In this third demo, I'm gonna show you some stuff out of Visual Studio and how it allows you to manage your Azure resources from here. Again, while Visual Studio is mainly a development tool, you can also use it for managing and creating new Azure resources or even updating settings and existing ones. Let me start with Visual Studio, going to the View tab, and there you can select Cloud Explorer, which basically shows you the information I have here. I can see that I'm using the free trial and the storage account has already been created for selecting my resource groups. I can have a view of my different resource groups that I already created. This is the new created Azure trial subscription without having any specific resources behind it. But as you can see in the screen here, if your Azure environment is being filled up with different resources, they will be listed here and the list might even be pretty extensive. Continuing on the same example as I showed you in PowerShell and Azure CLI command line tool, I can deploy a new resource group from here, creating a new Visual Studio project and then selecting Cloud Azure Resource Group. For this demo here, I'm gonna use a blank template, just creating a resource group, which obviously won't happen that much from Visual Studio because you can do a lot more complex things with it, but just quickly showing you how easy it is. It will recognize my pre-authenticated credentials, allowing me to create a new resource group, selecting a new location that I want, creating it, and then confirming the creation. That's all it takes. So if all goes fine, I'm going back to my Azure resources from the portal, refreshing my screen. And then you can see that I have created my packed resource group examples and the resource group from Visual Studio is also there. This completes my demo on Visual Studio. We're now at the end of this first video. I hope to see you back in the next one where I'm gonna talk about implementing virtual machine architecture.